Jerry Francis is certain one of his best signings is the dummy defensive wall he bought in the summer. Teddy Sheringham practices with it and to great advantage. It was ready, steady, Teddy goal from over 30 yards out after 21 minutes and it signalled the Middlesbrough defensive nightmare was to continue. Their goals against Colin went up again only a minute later. The ball was cleared but a deft Sheringham touch out wide followed by a Howells cross and a rule foxy header made it 2-0. There weren't many markers around by the way. And when Tottenham youngster Stephen Carr ran and ran to set up a second goal for Sheringham in the final minute, it rubber stamped Borough have the worst defensive record in the Premiership. Spurs looked solid at the back, well marshalled by Sol Campbell. Oh, we had a bit of for the home fans to check out. From left to right, Egil Ostenstad from Norway, Ulrich van Hobbel from Holland, and Ail Berkovic from Israel. It was the Norwegian who was involved in the unfortunate incident of the game. He was blameless when challenging for a Matt Letizia cross, but Sunderland goalkeeper Tony Coton cracked two bones in his right leg. He's unlikely to play again this season, a devastating blow for Coton and Sunderland. Seven minutes later, his replacement, Frenchman Lionel Perez, couldn't do much to stop his side from going a goal behind. Jason Dodd hit a screamer from 30 yards out. It was an overhead defensive clearance from Matt Letizia, yes, Matt Letizia, on his own six-yard line, that led to a second goal. The ball was quickly transferred from penalty area to penalty area, and when Gareth Hall upended Egil Ostenstad, penalty was the decision. Letizia finished it off. Berkovic was outstanding for Southampton. He helped set up a third goal for Neil Shipley, and after their poor start, Southampton now have two wins and a draw in their last three matches. Graham Souness wants more points and more signings. We have a timely boost for Villa against Leeds, who they meet in the Coca-Cola Cup on Wednesday. Mark Bosnich, at the centre of last week's controversy, had little to do. The home side had a number of chances. Sasha Churchich might have scored, but Nigel Martin was in excellent form. Villa, though, despite dominating the game, didn't actually take the lead until the 58th minute. Dwight York finally managing to beat the Leeds keeper. Villa won up, a second was always on the cards. It came six minutes later, this time York the provider for Tommy Johnson. Leeds boss George Graham pulled no punches. This was the worst performance since I took charge of the club. We were poor at the back, in midfield and up front. At Hillsborough, honours even. Sheffield Wednesday and Blackburn sharing the points. There was a new face on view. Wednesday gave a debut to Benito Carboni. Lots of tenors in three million. Wednesday got off to a flying start, just three minutes on the clock, when David Hurst galloped down the right and Andy Booth scored. Ray Harford's last throw of the dice to send on Lars Bohinen. It reaped instant dividends. Sherwood's shot hit the post. Bohinen made absolutely sure. But Rovers still rock bottom, looking for their first league win. It might have been a defeat, but for Tim Flowers, excellent save. I said before the season started, I thought we had... Even with Alan Shearer going, I thought we had as good a squad squad as anybody in this country in the Premier League, and I haven't changed my opinion on that. We've had a, we've not been able to play centre forwards together for very many games, uh, but I thought Chris Sutton was magnificent. I thought he, he was terrific. And uh... it's but Casey Keller was in good form here, denying Julian Dix. For much of today's encounter, Leicester looked like they might sneak a point. That is, until John Moncur popped up to give West Ham the lead 13 minutes from time. But the match ended in controversy when Leicester's Steve Walsh was sent off for a challenge on Ludo McClosco. Walsh had been booked earlier for deliberate handball. I have had uh, a word with the referee. He accepted my lashing out, as it were, you know, verbal lashing out. But... Uh... I would have to be concerned about it. Well, she came in, he's a whole lot of player, and, you know, and he gives everything week in, week out. He came up for a challenge here, and you know, he looked like he caught Ludo. I don't know until I see it on TV, but uh, you know, it's, it's been around a long time, Walsh, and he's, he's a tremendous competitor. So, as we've seen, Arsenal's point takes them to the top tonight. Wimbledon move into second with their win at Chelsea. Newcastle face Manchester United, and Liverpool play Everton tomorrow. Blackburn are still the only club in England or Scotland without a league win. Their draw at Sheffield Wednesday keeps them three points adrift of Coventry. Forest have slipped into the bottom three after being held by Derby, as we saw.